Good morning. Good morning. Let's be turning to Genesis chapter 9. Everything that we see that God did for Noah, to preserve Noah, to save Noah and his family, along with the living things and all the cattle that was in the ark, it was all for the glory of Christ. It was all to to glorify Christ in the hearts and minds of his people. And so it should come as no surprise that everything that we see here regarding this great deliverance brought by God with Noah and his family is a picture of the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church, for his people, those whom he calls effectually by his grace. And so it's given to glorify Christ in the hearts and minds of of his children, of his people. Now today, we see the grace of God for sinners in, for sinners in Christ. The grace of God in Christ, and it's pictured in this covenant that God makes with Noah and every creature that God makes with Noah. And in our text, he speaks of it in three ways. He gives us three points in our text here in, in chapter 9. He speaks of the covenant established. Then he speaks of the token of the covenant. And then there's the remembrance of the covenant. That's what we'll see here in our text this morning. I titled this message, Our Bow in the Clouds. Our Bow, Our Rainbow in the Clouds. Now we read in verse 11, this is where our text begins, he says, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more for the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. <clears throat> now, in light of Christ, in light of Christ, and he is how we understand the scriptures. If you would know what God is saying to you in his word, he's speaking to you in Christ. Everything he says here is to put your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and how that he has saved his people from their sins. And what he's declaring to you here in this chapter and what we've been seeing is that in Christ, judgment is put away. The judgment of God is satisfied. There's no judgment hanging over the heads of you that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The judgment of God is satisfied. It's been poured out in Christ. The, the debt that we owed has been paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. You that believe on him. And so God is saying, my church shall never be destroyed shall never be destroyed by my judgment and wrath. It's been satisfied for them. Now, this is a mystery of God revealed by faith. It's, re it's understood in Christ. It's declared in Christ, and we understand it and receive it by faith <clears throat> in Christ. Now, I want to say a few helpful things about this covenant that God makes with Noah, because what God is doing here is giving us a picture, an understanding of the covenant of grace made between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost that God may be gracious to his people. It pictures the covenant of grace. Now in this verse we see who makes or establishes this covenant. God says, I will. I will establish my covenant. I'm going to establish my covenant, and this is a covenant that God establishes with Noah. He makes it with Noah, saying, I will establish my covenant with you, with Noah. And because of this covenant with Noah, all the creation is blessed. All the creatures are blessed. All the living things are blessed because of this covenant that God makes with Noah. Now, let me just remind you again. I just want to 
to repeat this again that that what our God is doing is for the good of his people in the Lord Jesus Christ he's not putting any condition on man he's not putting any condition for the creature to fulfill this is a covenant of grace and God never puts a condition on the man whom he will save on the one whom he will save he does the whole work graciously for you in the Lord Jesus Christ now regardless of how wicked man is when we look at this covenant made with Noah regardless of how wicked man is because man is desperately wicked his heart is desperately wicked so wicked we can't even plumb the depths of just how evil we are in our nature just how dark how corrupt how vile this heart is which is in us God says my judgments put away I'm not going to judge the earth again by destroying it with water it's put away that's why and God actually ties it to the sacrifice of Noah and we'll see that in a bit but what I want you to remember here is that we're not looking at the flesh of man when I'm saying these things my eye is not upon Noah as a man and what a man of flesh has done but upon Noah as a picture and type of the Lord Jesus Christ and who he is and what he has done in delivering his people he offered up himself to the Father for the sins of the people he made an atonement for our sins with his blood and has satisfied God now look back there at this this sacrifice in Genesis 8 Genesis 8 verse 20 and verse 21 Noah comes off the ark and it says Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar what a picture of Christ Noah is a type of Christ and we see in him the high priest the Lord Jesus Christ is our high priest and he is the offer building he worked all righteousness he with his people fulfilled all righteousness for us in 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 showing that he is the lamb of god he is the high priest he's the altar and he's the sacrifice he's the sacrifice of every clean beast and of every clean fowl seems to me a picture of the body and 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 that that soul of christ which was offered up to the father to make satisfaction for the people everything we need Christ has provided for us and the Lord smelled a sweet savor a sweet savor that's Christ Christ is the sweet savor that the father smells and is satisfied and the Lord said in his heart I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done God shall not smite his church because she's been smitten in Christ we were crucified with him we're dead to the law the law has nothing more to say to us God is well pleased with us in his son the sweet smelling Savior rest in him believe him be comforted in your hearts looking to the Lord Jesus Christ so God's promise here as you see does not depend on man's doing not our keeping it now our not our putting it in place we can't even break it we cannot break this covenant that God has established himself God declares in his word his sovereignty his sovereignty and he tells us in his word that he does exactly as he pleases and saving whom he will for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. He tells us in that same chapter of Romans 9 that he raised up Pharaoh for that very purpose. And he hardened Pharaoh in Pharaoh's own sin, he hardened him in order to destroy him, to display his power in his destruction 
so that we see that God is able to destroy whom he will, but to whom he will, he is gracious and compassionate and receives all who cry out to him for grace and mercy, for help in time of need. He's merciful. And not only Pharaoh, but again, we see another king, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. He was humbled by God and brought to confess that all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And God doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? None of us can say, What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? How dare you do that to me? He is God. We are the creature. And God is able and does do exactly what pleases him according to his good pleasure. And, and, he do, and what he does is right, it's good, it's perfect and just every time. Now, in this covenant established by God with Noah, we are given a picture of the covenant of grace. It's established for us by the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and fulfilled the will of the Father for you, for you his people. This covenant of grace is revealed to us for our peace and for our comfort, that we may rest in, in the promises of our God given to us freely in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing about this covenant has been left to chance. Nothing yet remains for your hand to do. Everything that you will do has been predestinated by God in such a way that, that it re, he, he will bring the revelation of Christ to you manifesting his grace in your heart, making you to know what he has done for you and, and, and cause you to cry out to him for grace and mercy. Because he makes all things new for his people in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing's left to chance. And it certainly is not dependent on you and me. It rests on the Lord Jesus Christ alone. And in everything the sweet savor of Christ is manifested in in the in in the creation whether for whether in them that believe or in them that believe not it all manifests and reveals the grace of God in the Lord Jesus Christ so God the Father made a covenant with his son and the Holy Ghost for the salvation of the elect now let me just give you five things here regarding this the establishment of this covenant turn over to Ephesians 1 Let's go to Ephesians 1, that you may be assured that it rests on Christ, that all things are ordered and sure by God for you in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not resting on you, but him. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ and so he's telling us this is between the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost verse 4 according <clears throat> as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love God chose a people before the foundation of the world and committed us committed his people to the care of Christ himself that he would redeem them and this was all done before the world was created before Adam was created before he fell before you and I came forth and did any good or evil God had purposed this in his own purpose of grace with the Son the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost <clears throat> verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Not according to your works. Not according to whether you're a good person or a bad person. Not according to what you have or have not done or said or want to do. It's according to God in Christ. It's according to his good pleasure. So the Father chose whom he would in Christ in Christ 
verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So you see, brethren, it's all between the Godhead. It's not dependent on what you or I have done. The second thing that we see about this established covenant is that it's ratified by Christ. It's put into effect. It is already established. It is the covenant now by which God may be gracious and merciful to whom he is compassionate and merciful to in Christ. This has been ratified by the blood of Christ. It's signed with his own blood. It is in effect, brethren, this covenant. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And I add verse 21, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I add that just to say that you know, when, when the natural man hears of the grace of God, he thinks, how is this possible? Man's going to go and do what man wants to do. Well, yeah, man is going to do that. But God for his people, to the glory and praise of Christ, reveals and manifests this life, this salvation, this work of his grace in the hearts of his people so that we love him even as he loves us. And we serve him and, and serve one another in love, in faith, in hope, in joy to see his kingdom established in the earth. So we rejoice in him. Christ established this, this covenant. He had the authority as the Lamb of God and he came in the flesh and laid down his love, shed, laid down his life and shed his blood to put away the sins of his people, to make satisfaction and to obtain eternal forgiveness for us. Third thing we see is that the blessings of the salvation by Christ is effectually wrought in the heart of every child through regeneration. It's not this, this flesh is still as wicked and wretched as it's ever been. But we are effectually redeemed and saved and have this, this knowledge of what Christ has done, this understanding of what he's done in the new man through the regeneration of the Holy Ghost. 2 Corinthians 1.22 says, Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So that all for whom Christ died, the Holy Spirit of God seeks out the lost sheep and brings that gospel to them, giving them life to hear the things that are being said with an ear of faith and to believe those things, to believe the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive that which God has done for us, not by our works, but what he's provided in Christ. Fourth thing. Because this covenant of grace is established for us by Christ's blood, the children of God are assured and comforted in this grace toward us. And we see this, how he works this in our hearts. When you hear what Christ has done, it's peace. It's a joy. We're made thankful to the Lord for what he's done in Christ. When we see what sinners we are and how merciful, how patient, how kind God is, it, it is a great comfort and peace to the child of God redeemed. David, we see that comfort in David. In 2 Samuel 23, verse 5, he said, Although my house be not so with God, although I have children and friends and loved ones who don't believe the grace of God and don't look to the Redeemer, who I know lives, though it be not so with my house, yet he hath made with me and ever lasting covenant ordered in all things and sure for this is all my salvation and all my desire although he maketh it not to grow I'm thankful for what the Lord has shown to me how many people have you've probably seen it when you've spoken the gospel to somebody and they hear for the first time how that God has accomplished the full, complete salvation of all his people. And it look, you can see a light goes off in their head. 
and they realize, well, wait a minute, my husband or my grandmother or somebody I knew that is dead didn't know this, and they immediately shut it down because they can't bear the thought. And, and what the Lord is saying is, don't worry about what they know or don't know. What is God saying to you? What is he speaking to you? What has he revealed to you in the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we're all sinners and we need the grace of God. We need him, what he's given to us in Christ. And so to you that hear it, in spite of what you know to be true or what you think, because we don't know anything, but, but when the Lord reveals Christ in your hearts and your need of him, it's a comfort. It's a comfort to the people of God. Even Isaiah said it this way, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now fifth, the hope that believers had then is the same hope that you have this day, that the children of God have this day. Look over at 2 Timothy 1. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to pick up in verse 9. We see here that it is indeed not of works, but it's of Christ. It's of what he has done for his people. 2 Timothy 1 9, who hath saved us and called us with an holy call not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel through the preaching of the gospel through the giving of the gospel that speaks of Christ Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. When, when the Spirit comes and gives life to a child, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ what he what he reveals in us is 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 that we're done trying to work our own salvation we're done trying to please God by the things of religion by the things that we do we're done trying to earn a righteousness for ourselves and we're made to look to Christ and that belief in Christ is a committing all our salvation that we dare not go before the throne of God in our own works of righteousness which we have done because we know that what we do in this flesh is sinful it's it's marked and stained and covered with sin but what Christ has done is perfect and holy and he has made us righteous so that we come in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ alone alone he's all our hope all our hope and we commit everything to him just like Paul said I've committed everything I gave up the law I'm done with the, all the things I did when I was a Pharisee they're done to me they're worthless to me it counts for nothing my standing here in the pulpit as a preacher is not my righteousness it's not my good works that is not my hope to stand before God I have the same hope that every saved sinner has which is the blood of Christ has availed for me He's washed me clean of my sins. That's my only hope, and that's the only hope I or you need, the Lord Jesus Christ alone. So the covenant that God made with Noah is a covenant of grace. It pictures the covenant of grace that God made for us with Christ before the world began. Now the next thing that we see is the token, the token of the covenant that God gives to his child. It's given to remind us of this covenant of grace. Look at verses 12 through 14 in Genesis 9. 12 through 14. And God said, 
This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. This is all that are in Christ, is what he's speaking of. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. No, I don't know, but I've heard that back then it had never rained upon the earth. As we read in, in, in the early part of Genesis, that the way the plants and the, the, the ground was watered was through a misting that rose up and watered the earth. And there were rivers and streams that watered the things that needed to be watered. But there was a canopy of water above the earth separated by that firmament, that atonement, that separated those that were under the atonement and those that were above it. And so when the Lord brought the flood on the earth, not only did the fountains of the deep break open and all that water down there, but all the water above came pouring down. And there was climate change then. There was a, a change in, in the atmosphere and how things worked there so that now there were clouds. Now there was thunder and lightning and, and, and atmospheric changes that brought on rain. And so when there was rain, there was now seen a rainbow in the clouds the way we see it, right? When do we see the rainbow? When there's clouds in the skies, when there's rain clouds in the skies and that rain has passed over you and that sunlight comes shining through, through the raindrops, you see that spectrum of light revealed in, in the rainbow there. And so that token of the rainbow, the rainbow is the token, that token declares to us that the judgment is put away. That the judgment is put away. Even if it did rain before. The, the point is that we have a token now, the rainbow, and that judgment is put away. Do you imagine that when Noah and his family heard the thunder, the thunder clouds roar and the, the rain began to fall, think about what went through their head that first time. They had to walk by faith, didn't they? They had to believe that promise of God made to them that, that I shall never flood the earth, or never destroy the earth with a flood again and every living creature. I won't do it. I won't do it. There will be floods at times, as we see, but not to destroy all the earth. Not an overwhelming flood as we did to destroy it in Noah's day. So Noah and his family walked by faith, believing the promise of God. And when they saw that rainbow... They were reminded of what the Lord had said. Well, when are you walking by faith? When everything's peaceful, everything's going your way, there's no difficulties, there's no sorrows, you're at, you're at rest? Is that when you walk by faith? Or are you walking by faith when you're tried and you're troubled and there's sorrow and hardships and difficulties? That's when we walk by faith. Lord, you say in your word that you would appear for me, that you remember me. Lord, save me, help me. That's when we cry out to him and we walk by faith. Well, so it is with the rainbow. The only time you see the rainbow is when there's clouds in the sky. When there's dark clouds in the sky and the, and the, and the rain is falling and somewhere that light is shining through and reflects that rainbow, that spectrum of light, remind you of the token of his grace and mercy and to this day you know just speaking of the word on its face here to this day God has not destroyed the earth with a flood but as he said in Genesis 8 22 the last verse of that chapter while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease that promise has never failed. It didn't fail Noah, and it's failed no one to this day. He's kept his word. So though your life, though, in, 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 though you go through times where the skies are filled with clouds, yet God has declared to you through his gospel word the token of his love, the token of his peace, the token of his grace, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given to him to
to remind you to look to him and to believe that you that believe the promise of his word, that he is gracious to you, not for what you do, but for Christ's sake, rest in him. He is the token of God's love and peace for us. To remind us that the wrath of God is put away for all who come to him believing Christ. All who trust the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ and rest in him. He sent this word of grace to proclaim it again in your ears. He's not turned you away. He's not sent you away, but he's drawn you again to hear the words of his grace declared freely, boldly, sovereignly in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe him. Trust him. He is faithful and kind and gentle to all who cry to him. He is the assurance. Christ is the assurance that God has given that the judgment is satisfied, the debt is paid, and he gives you all you need in the Lord Jesus Christ. The covenant's established, and you have the token. Now, finally, we see this, the covenant remembered by God. Let's look at verse 15 and 16. <clears throat> and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So not only is Christ a token given for us, seen in the rainbow there, to, to show us that the wrath of God is put away. But he tells us that when he sees the rainbow in the cloud, he also remembers his covenant of grace. He remembers his covenant of grace with every living creature because the view is in Christ, as we saw this morning. Warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That speaks of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. All in Christ are saved and none is lost. In Adam all die. In Christ all his body are saved. And so every living creature are you that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And God himself gives us assurance that for Christ's sake he's gracious to us. In this statement beginning here in verse 9 in the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it. He's saying that when I see the blood of my son which was shed for you, I'll pass over you. I will not destroy you. I will not give you according as your sins deserve because I've put them all away when I judge them in my son Jesus Christ. Put them away for you. The atonement has been made. Now one day Christ is going to return. And when he returns, heaven and the earth shall be made new. But Christ has assured us that until that day, this gospel is to go forth, to be proclaimed, to declare the, the grace of God, that covenant established graciously in and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. To declare, to lift up that banner, that token, that ensign, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. For the people to look to. For the people to have hope and to trust and know that God has saved them and delivered them. And it's that same token that the, that the Father looks to. That Holy God looks to and, and, and is satisfied. Now when he returns, or until that time of his return, the Father remembers his covenant of grace for his people. This is what we see in Acts. Let's go to, to Acts. Acts 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 7 through 9. And he said unto them, this is our Lord, our risen Lord saying, speaking, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. In other words, we don't need to worry about it. He's already told us back here that the, the, the seasons are going to continue. There's going to be summer and winter. There's going to be sunshine and rainfall. It's, it's not going to change. It's going to continue as it, as it is. You don't need to worry yourselves about it. 
But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Paul described it this way when he said, I preach this gospel to every creature under heaven every creature under heaven and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight now he's not in our physical eyesight anymore brethren but he is in the eyesight of God he is in the eyesight who said and the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Now let's see this further illustrated in scriptures. Let's go to Revelation 4. Revelation 4, and make sure you, you leave a marker because we're going to come back to another scripture in a bit. In Revelation. So Revelation 4, and look at verse 2 and 3. And immediately... I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. The picture there of the, the rainbow all about the throne is that any creature any request that comes to that throne, that approaches that throne, must pass through the rainbow. Must go through the rainbow. And any decree, any blessing that comes from that throne passes through the rainbow. It's a picture that we are received in Christ. Our God receives us in Christ. Our God blesses us in the Lord Jesus Christ. And without him is not anything given and nothing is known because the rainbow surrounds that throne of our God so that he's ever before the face of our God. He's known of, of God. And so when we approach that throne, we approach that throne in Christ faultless, faultless, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, perfect before the holy, all-knowing eye of God, thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, hold your place there in, in Revelation 4, but back in Jeremiah 31, let's turn there. I'll read one verse while you're going there, verse 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. What a picture that when our God draws us to himself, He's drawing us to Christ. He's bringing us through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how he draws us to himself. And so nothing is going to alter this established covenant of grace with God. He's going to make sure that none are ever lost. None of his people shall ever come short of the glory of God in Christ. Now he promises us this covenant in his word. Jeremiah 31 Verse 31 through 34. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was not husband unto them, saith the Lord. That covenant that he's speaking of there is a covenant of works. It's a covenant of the law made with Moses. That is not how we come to God. That's not how we worship God. We do not come to God in the law, even to this day. Even to this day. He's given us his spirit. And he says here in the next verse, This is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days. Saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. He's speaking of the regeneration, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which he gives to us to know the mind of God, to know his heart, to see the love of God given to us in Christ. It makes us new creatures. 
so that we love him and walk by his spirit in faith being led in paths of righteousness for his name's sake he keeps us he teaches us how we are to love one another and walk before our god and walk among one another caring for one another being tender-hearted and forgiving one another for as god has forgiven us for christ's sake he reveals that in us by his spirit not the law that's not the believer's rule of faith it's the it's the grace of god it's the the love of christ in us verse 34 and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them saith the lord for i will forgive their iniquity and i will remember their sin no more this covenant is the covenant of grace established in the blood of the lord jesus christ and god remembers that covenant which he made with christ who shed his blood to redeem his people it's put away we have fellowship with god and so we shall know the fullness of these things we shall see it all come to pass and all brought together and wrapped up in and by christ let's go back to revelation 10 this is our last passage revelation 10 it says in verse 1 and i saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire we see there a bow in the cloud a bow in the clouds always shows christ with that rainbow and christ in the cloud coming again Verse 2, and he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Everything's under his dominion. Everything. And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared, lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And John was about to write these things. And the Lord said, don't do it, John. This, this, we're going to keep that. Otherwise, we might know what we ought not to know. Just keep that silent. It's not for us. But he tells us what, what the coming of Christ means. When Christ comes to the earth, he tells us what it means in verse 6 and 7. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that are there, that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And so when Christ comes again, when we see that cloud with our own eyes, and that rainbow in the cloud, we'll know that the end is at hand. It's, it's, it's here. But until that time, we have this blessed gospel to declare the established covenant in the blood of Christ, to, to proclaim this token of his love and mercy and grace to, to bless and comfort the people of God who are afraid and shaken and terrified looking to their own works. He says, don't, don't spend and labor anymore. Look to my son. Look to my servant whom I have sent to bless you, to comfort you, to give you peace in your hearts, the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's how God is merciful and gracious to us in the Lord Jesus Christ, our bow in the cloud. Amen.